Hey, Stefan. Hey, Neil. Neil. How are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. How are you? All good, thank you. Cool. Are you ready? Yep. Should we make start? I think we can start. So let's do this. Okay, good. Um, so hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. Um, this presentation is around the journey of the WVD community, um, which obviously we've built over the past 10 months. So um, the community is run by myself, uh, Stefan Degamanze and Patrick Kohler. Um, so we're just going to go through a few slides, tell you about how we built the community, where we started and uh, yeah, give you a bit of good information about community in general. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited uh, to do this presentation together with Neil. Uh, like Neil said, uh, during this presentation, we will cover our journey uh, from the start of April uh, to where we're at right now with the WVD community. Uh, but first, uh, before we start, let us introduce ourselves. Yep, so my name's Neil McLaughlin. Um, I've been around for a while. Uh, makes me feel quite old when I see how long I've been working in IT. So I've been around for about 20 years. Um, our company work as a Microsoft desktop technical architect, sorry, modern devices technical architect um, for Cognitive Business Group which are a new company been spun up because I used to work for a company called New Signature. Um, but on the 1st of March, I will start a new role um, where I'll be working for a company called Nadio as the UK Phil CTO. So very much looking forward to that. I've uh, been around for a while in the virtualization field, so I pretty much spent the past 10 years focused on sort of Citrix and VDI. Um, but in the past sort of 12 months, I kind of shifted over to focusing on sort of Desktop as a service, um, Azure and Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, I'm also co-founder of the WVD community, along with Stefan, and also co-founder of the UK WVD user group as well. Um, sort of, I am quite heavily involved with community stuff, so um, I'm also a Citrix CTA, so I've been rewarded that this year. And also this year, I was awarded the Microsoft MVP as well. And um, if you want to catch me on social media, you can catch me on Virtual Mank on Twitter, um, also on the WVD community website as well, and also my website, which is virtualmank.co.uk. Perfect. So my name is Stefan Dingemanse. I'm 32 years old and I live in the Netherlands. And currently I work as a senior platform engineer for a company called Firman ICT. Uh, Firman is a cloud solution provider uh, with its roots in the Microsoft and Citrix technology stack and we are focusing on application and desktop delivery on the Azure platform. I work well, not as much as Neil, but I work for 14 years in the IT. Um, since this year, uh, since the 1st of January, uh, I was rewarded the Microsoft MVP award in the enterprise mobility space. Uh, for the last two years, I'm mainly focusing on things like infrastructure as code uh, with Azure DevOps, uh, but also Microsoft Azure uh, and of course WVD. I am the co-founder of the WVD community together with Neil, and I also am the co-founder of the Dutch WVD community user group. Um, in my spare time, I am try to write some blogs on my own uh, website, stevendingemanse.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and if you have any questions or just want to reach out to me, uh, you're always free to send me an email uh, on mail, mail at stevendegemanse.com. So let's start where it all began last year. Um, Microsoft announced the public preview of Windows Virtual Desktop in March 2019 and I thought this could be a very interesting thing to focus on. As you can see on uh, on this slide, on the 24th of April last year, I noticed that Neil uh, started the WVD community website. And from my experience, uh, there were a lot of virtual events, uh, webinars, presentations, but there was no single place uh, to go to, to have an overview of all those events. So I just thought, well, hey, Let's send Neil a message. Maybe we can do that on the WVD community website. And I think that is that's the exact moment where it all began for myself. So from 
the 24th of April, uh, me and Neil uh, worked together on, on setting up the WVD community, uh, making a roadmap for, for the coming months. And we just tried to figure out, well, hey, what can we do with, with the WVD community? Thanks, Stefan. Um, so, so the question, I guess, is why? Um, as I mentioned before, I, I've been heavily involved with community stuff um, when I used to do a lot of stuff with Citrix. Um, I know the power of the community. Um, so essentially, that that's the reason why. Um, so we set up the WD community because there was a lot of stuff missing. There's um, a lot of separate stuff going on, but nothing to kind of bring it all together. So um we saw lots of information that was being shared in different bits um so we the very first bit of it was the newsletter which we'll, we'll cover um a bit later in this presentation but yeah i mean there was a lot of buzz of excitement around windows virtual desktop at the time um so we decided to sort of help those people try and understand windows virtual desktop because there was a lot of questions being asked so and there was no kind of central community source to go to, to to answer those questions um and also like to mention as well kind of the the microsoft global bat belts um they've been immense help um in trying to sort of help promote the community for us and um, get involved with the community and also um answer any questions that people have asked that we're unable to answer ourselves i mean our goal for the wd community was to share knowledge and that is still our number one goal that is what we do um, and I'm pretty proud of what we've all achieved, myself, Stefan and Patrick, um, because people come to us to find answers to stuff that they don't know about. Um, so for me, that's we've achieved our goal and I hope we can uh, keep on going from strength to strength. So like Neil uh, just mentioned, our goal was to, to share knowledge uh, about WVD. So how did we do that? Um, we first started with our WVD uh, community weekly newsletter. So throughout the week, we collected all the news we could find about WVD, uh, webinars, blog posts, uh, community contributions, uh, news from Microsoft about new features. And every Sunday, we will just put all that information together in one newsletter, and we would publish it on our website uh, and share it via our our Twitter link. As, as you can see, uh, there was a lot of visitors on our website. Average around 3,500. It's amazing to see um, how many people were looking through all those information, all those knowledge we were sharing together, uh, not just me and Neil, uh, but also the complete community. Uh, every, every week, there were more and more contributions uh, from community members, uh, people who uh, had some free time or made some free time uh, to write their, about their experiences with WVD, uh, to write how to's, everything. We just put it in the newsletter um, and shared it with, uh, with the world. So sharing that information was the first step, but we wanted to be, we wanted to make it more interactive. So Neil and myself decided, well, we should create a place where people can go to, ask questions, uh, connect to each other, uh, share their experience. Um, so we thought it was a great idea to set up our own uh, Slack community workspace. So we started the Slack community workspace with, I think, maybe just four or five channels um we shared it on twitter and we every day we saw it growing from like 10 50 100 people uh until today we got over 900 people on our slack channel our goal for today is also to reach those thousand users so if you're not a member of our slack workspace feel free to scan the qr code um, sign up for the wvd community and join like like minded people who share their love, their knowledge, their passion about technology with the focus on uh, on WVD. What's also interesting is that on that Slack channel, uh, we also got some people from Microsoft 
like Tom Hickling, uh, Jim Moyle, and we even got our own like feature request channel. Um, and we know from experience that indeed Tom Hickling and other people from Microsoft are looking at that channel to see what the world is asking for, what the feature requests are, uh, what the issues are. Uh, if there are issues at the, on the Microsoft site, they will also publish it on our Slack channel. So it's 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 great to see uh, the interaction between all of all of those people. Uh, they are asking questions. Uh, they are starting threads about their experience. People are reacting to it. It's 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 amazing to see this. So Neil, what happens next? So next we set up a podcast. Um, that was a quite a good experience. Um, I think the, the story behind the podcast is, I think one Saturday morning, I, I turn around to Stefan and says, let's do a podcast. Um, so um, we had both had zero experience of doing a podcast. There was a lot of Googling involved along the lines of what is a podcast. Um, a lot of uh, learning, a lot of teaching each other. And I think that first weekend that we did it, I mean, me and Stefan literally spent from early Saturday morning to late Sunday evening, um, recording our first episode, learning how to edit it, learning how to upload it, doing all that stuff. So it was a, a, a great learning experience um, and we really, really enjoyed doing it. Um, we were quite regular um, at the first couple of months, but um, re more recently, the past couple of weeks, we've been struggling for time a bit, but we hope to continue to do, to do the podcast in the future. I mean, on our first guest, we had Tom Hickling um, from Microsoft, who has been a huge supporter of the WD community. So he was a, a good first guest and he had lots of information to share. And that is our still our most listened to episode. So um, thank you for that, Tom. And we've had a lot of people from like the Microsoft product group come on. Um, we've had people who have never been on a podcast before. So that, that's really good to see. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been lots of fun. We're still learning. And um, so if you do want to become come on a podcast, please just give us a shout and um, we're happy to do that. We're probably soon um, going to start up the podcast again after uh, I think the past four weeks we've not done one um, because we've just been so busy with some personal stuff. Um, but hopefully in the next two weeks, we'll start that up again. So if you do want to be a guest, please reach out to myself, Patrick or Stefan and, and we'll get you one if you have some knowledge that you, you want to share. Yes, definitely. So after we started the podcast, um, somebody from the community, and I think almost everybody will know him, Bas van Kaam, uh, came with the idea of starting like the user groups, the local WVD user groups. Um, I don't know the exact date, but he, he tweeted out on, on Twitter. And I think new within 24 hours, there were like five, six user groups like yep. born, it was, yeah, it was literally within the, 20, the first 24 hours. Um, at this moment, we got 15 user groups worldwide. And for me personally, uh, what's very interesting to see is, is most of those people that never ever did something like a user group, but they were like, inspired by us, inspired by the ID on setting up a local user group to like share the knowledge. It's it's easier for them. It's probably in the native language. Uh, they can invite other speakers. They can they can ask people from Microsoft. Um, so what happened next? It, it's the start of those user groups, but also like I think every month there is a a event for those user groups. The Belgium one, the UK, uh, the Dutch one. Everybody is trying to do that like every month. And average, we got like 200, 250 members uh, on those meetup pages. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing to see how much that has been been grown and how like myself, Neil and Patrick are like indeed inspiring others uh, to do things like this and, and to get more involved within the community. So if you live in a country where you don't have any WVD user group, 
feel free to reach out to us. We can help you setting it up. Uh, we can give you some tips and tricks on how to promote it, how to create your meetup page, uh, how to get in contact with those speakers. Um, so if you're interesting, just let us let us know. So where are we now? It's been an amazing year. We started in April. It's it's like eight, nine months. We got 15 user groups worldwide. Neil always making jokes about how many countries there are in the world. And we should at least get the same amount of user groups. So let's try that together. Uh, within those user groups, there were over more than 40 events, uh, meetups, uh, with all, all the people from the community, from Microsoft, from partners, vendors. We got almost 1,000 active users on our Slack, Slack uh, workspace. Uh, like I mentioned before, we want to reach 1,000 at the end of this day. So please help us with, uh, with that. We have published over 47 newsletters every Sunday. Uh, we got an average of around 3,500 3, visitors each month on our, on our website. If you want to stay up to date with the newsletter, you can just navigate to wvdcommunity.com. You can fill in your email address and subscribe to that. And like Neil just mentioned, our podcast, it was something we didn't have any experience with. Uh, it was, well, it still isn't very professional. It's, it's just fun to do. And what's, what's great to see is, I think a few weeks ago, Neil, uh, we received a message uh, from the company where we, uh, what we are using for the, the, the streaming, that we got over 2,000 downloads. So it's, it's, it's very great to see that we, well, we didn't have any experience. Um, like Neil said, it was, I think the first one was like two days <laughs> in a row, just trial and error, trying to do some things. But I'm very proud uh, that we reached this together. Yeah, I'm sure they have the outtakes somewhere, Stefan. Maybe we should publish them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right, okay, yeah, so the, the importance of community, uh, as I sort of touched on earlier, um, for me personally, and I'm sure for, for Stefan as well, community is a huge, huge thing. Um, I say I've been involved in IT for around 20 years, um, but I would say I've only been involved with community for the past five years, and it's had a humongous benefit on my career. I can't tell you how much it's helped my career. Um, just not from a career advance, advancement perspective, but also just knowledge that I've gained. Um, sort of the old world, you used to basically sit back and read your old Windows NT4 resource guides and you knew everything, right? Um, but with the world changing so fast today, you can't know everything. No, nobody knows everything. Um, each person has their own kind of individual specific area. And the whole point of a community is to bring that knowledge together so it's accessible for everybody. Um, because if you if you just keep that knowledge inside your head, then that's it's not a good thing to do um, because also you won't learn from others either. So not only when you're in a community, do you give out knowledge, you also receive knowledge. Um, so you don't sort of have to cram and learn everything at once. You can gradually just take in that knowledge week in, week in, week at a time. And you'd be surprised how much knowledge that you actually do pick up just from reading blog posts, listening to podcasts, um, checking stuff on Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, in regards to your career as well, it's immensely beneficial to your career. Um, stuff like the knowledge stuff I sort of shared um, and because you're doing thing in the public domain, um, employees do pick up on that. Um, employers would rather probably employ someone who is passionate about their job, right? Because generally, if you are involved in the community, you are passionate. Um, you're not going to do this because you're forced to. You're going to do it because you want to do it, right? Um, so I know for a fact that a lot of employees these days, they look on stuff like GitHub, they'll look on Twitter, they'll look on LinkedIn, they'll look at various different social media sources to try and find someone to, to get fill a role. Because obviously traditionally you apply for put up a job on the job site, you receive 300 CVs for all these people, you got to sift through all these CVs and etc. And, and then the recruitment card, recruitment company is going to charge you a lot of money to do that as well. Um, but now a lot of players are thinking, hang on, 
we know the experts in each industry, we can go to these community groups or we can check on GitHub and see who's publishing what and approach those people. So it's completely changing the way that people find jobs. So that's another bonus for the community stuff as well, I'd find. I mean, personally, my two previous positions I've got through my community involvement, um, I can't remember the last time that I applied for a job in the normal way. Um, and I'm sure it's exactly the same for, for everybody else. So as we'll come to in the next slides, um, please get involved with the community. Um, it will benefit you. So I'll hand over to Stefan, who will go through that in a bit more detail. Yeah. So like um, like Neil just said, it's 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 all about the the involvement, I think, within the community. Uh, for me personally, uh, this started like last year uh, where I decided that in my previous years I learned so much from not only like the NT4 book Neil just mentioned but way way more from all those active community members uh, who volunteered their time to write how to, to write blog posts to share their knowledge to share their experience with products from Microsoft but also from other uh, vendors and last year was the the start for me to to give back to the community so i started with like volunteering my time uh, and building my relationships what i meant with building relationships is reach out to each other if you if you see something on on twitter or linkedin and you have a question uh, feel free to ask them because most of the times those people are very very happy to help you with it and they will also volunteer their time to help you um we know it over here don't be shy uh i remember when i started last year uh with getting more involved within the community that it's it's perfectly fine to ask questions to just sit there and watch uh the forums uh but also to interact with those people uh, don't be shy that that you don't get uh, you don't have any contributions um, because I think everybody who is trying to to get involved if it's like with with asking questions but also with sharing their knowledge with sharing their partial passion that's the reason why we can build this community um, inspire I think what I have accomplished and Neil and Patrick the last few months is to also inspire others the exact same way those community members inspired us. So inspire others. It's 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 a matter of 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 sharing again your knowledge, your experience, helping each other uh, throughout the community. Uh, and hopefully you will can inspire some others to do the same and we can grow and grow these communities. OK, so let's talk about imposter syndrome. Um, for me, this is something which potentially is one of the main reasons why some people don't get involved with the community and um, why some people wouldn't attend um, a meetup or wouldn't stand up in a, a room full of what they see as technical experts and start asking questions um, because imposter syndrome is effectively where you don't think that you know enough um, but that is so far from the truth um, it's everybody starts from the same place right so we we're all born on day zero we all knew exactly the same information the same applies to your IT career um, I'm sure We've all launched the PowerShell console for the first time. We've all seen the WVD console for the first time. We've all used our first ARM template for the first time. We've all started from the same place. OK, the, the only difference between yourself and the experts are the experts have taken the time to put in, learn, get involved in the community and do the stuff. That is it. So don't ever sit back and think that you're not good enough because that's not true and um, everybody is capable of learning and um, that's something which I'm, I'm hugely passionate about so um one thing which i for me the the turning point in my career um and attending the youth groups is when i attended all these youth groups and there were people who i thought were absolute gods 
And I was like, how do they know so much information? And when you talk to those people and when you go out for beers with them, you realise that those people just like you and me. OK, so don't be scared to talk to them, approach them, speak to them, ask them for that advice. And that's what the community is there. So next time you go to a meetup or next time you're thinking of going to a meetup or next time you're thinking about writing that blog post, but you don't want to write the blog post because you don't think you're good enough. Not true. Um, it's all part of the learning process. So just put yourself out there. Um, you learn from mistakes. That's how we learn. So, yeah, that's all I want to say on that subject. So, as I said, don't be scared. Just do it as the, the Nike advert says. Yes. <clears throat> so let's talk about community recognition as well. So um, each sort of technology has its own community area. So we've got the likes of Microsoft, Citrix, VMware, Parallels. They all have their own recognition. So Microsoft has the MVP um and myself and stefan have both sort of been involved in the mv program so do you want to uh, share your mvp journey stefan <laughs> yes i will i definitely want to share it so like i mentioned in the introduction on on the first of january this year uh, i received an email from from microsoft that i have been awarded with the mvp award and of course we all know that you would be uh, nominated uh, you have to fill in all your your contributions, uh, all the things you've done in the past year. Uh, but I never ever expected it to to be like this quickly. Um, I think it's uh, being awarded with the MVP award is is a um, yeah like a token of appreciation from from Microsoft uh, for all the community work we do. And I think everybody can contribute to the community um, by writing articles, by writing books, um, setting up user groups, organizing uh, those events, uh, writing very deep technical deep dives on how to do whatever. And Neil just also mentioned like the, the imposter syndrome. Well, I can tell you this. When I received that email, I, I truly couldn't believe it that they choose me with like, in my opinion, we did not very special things. But the more I think about it, the more I also understand that we did. We spent hours and hours last year in setting up this community. We spent hours and hours on on the podcast, on the newsletters. Uh, we tried to bring people together to share our knowledge to our love to other people. And well, this event is one of those examples. I think without the WVD community um, and also without COVID, of course, it it would take much it, uh, way more time to to accomplish this. So yeah, for me personally, it's a yeah, it's a great like compliment from Microsoft. Uh, and a huge thank you for us um, to say, well, thank you for your hard work, for your contributions to the community and all the uh, work you, uh, you have done. So, I, let me check, quickly check the time. Uh, we got two more yeah, minutes, minutes, Neil, cool. One more minute. So, we all know uh, COVID-19 has made a big impact on our life. Uh, working remote from home is for most people nowadays the new standard. Um, and suddenly there is also a very small line between your private work, your private your work and, and, and community stuff. Um, we can all see, I think, that the, the impact of COVID on the community and it's both positive as negative. Um, there are no in-person events anymore. Before COVID, these events were the way to go to build relationships, uh, introduce yourself to new people and stay current on the latest technology. But even in times where there are no in-person events anymore, uh, we can still connect and meet new people. Uh, for me personally, last year I set a goal for myself to meet those new people, to get to know people who share the same passion and drive for technology. And to be honest, this was quite easy. 
just start out with sending people you want to be in touch with a message. Well, hey, how about we can schedule a chat um, and find out what you're working on, what I am working on, what your passion is, what you want to do in the future. Um, but also with all those. Um, so with, with the impact of COVID, uh, there were no in-person events anymore. And suddenly there were like a major of, of online events, online meetups. Um, and I think uh, the impact of COVID, the positive thing is that it's way easier for me personal, but I think for more people to start with things like presenting and public speaking from like your own um, your own house, your own work uh, space uh, with or without camera, you can safely present uh, without like seeing hundreds of people looking at you. Uh, for me personally, I'm, I'm still learning, to be honest, before this presentation, I was very nervous and I'm still am. Uh, but this this is the complete learning curve. This is why um, I'm doing this. And this is also why I would also like to thank Neil, but also Esther Bartel for helping me uh, doing these things. Because without them and without the community and without all those other MVPs, I wouldn't be able to do this, uh, I think. Um, so like I said, I'm still learning how to do this. But again, there are so many people within the community who are willing to help you if you want to. OK, so we, we've talked a lot about the good side. I'll be quick because I know we're a bit over time here. Um, we talked a lot about the good side, but what about the, the downsides of all this stuff? So, um, I mean, before COVID and before all this impacted the world, um, the the lines between um, sort of your personal life and your work life when you work in IT were drawn anyway, right? We all had to do late night changes. We all had to learn stuff outside of working hours. It, it was quite bad. So once you had COVID, and sort of community work into that mix as well it gets even worse um i know this because i've suffered it myself um especially over the past few months um so i'm just saying be careful um when you get involved in community make sure you set boundaries um because it can consume you there's so much information out there there's so much to learn but you also need to look after yourself you need to look after your mental health and you need to look after your family so Make sure your family, your mental health and yourself always comes first. Um, the community will always be there. So if you need to take a breather, um, do that. That's fine. No one's going to feel bad for you doing it. It's just you are a person, you are a human being. So you can't expect it to be work sort of 24 seven. So yeah, um, if you want to get involved, just be careful. So some key takeaways, um, don't get involved. Don't be scared to get involved with the community. Um, it's a it's a great place to be. Um, you'll learn lots, you'll meet lots of new people. For me, it's been life changing. I'm sure for Stefan, it's been life changing. Yes. I'm sure the same for, for Patrick as well. Um, it's full of good things. I can't think of any downsides. Yes, I, we've all put a lot of hours in, but we enjoy it. We love it. So it's it's definitely a good thing. Um, do you want to discuss the next one, Stefan? Be curious. Um, yeah, so so be curious. Just ask questions. Go go meet people. Um, always, always, yeah. Just just be curious. And also the second thing is do what you love. And I think well, both Neil and myself, uh, especially the last few months, uh, we both agree that. Um, everybody should do what makes them happy. Everybody should do what 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 you love. And I think that's the the most important thing. So it's not a you don't have to be involved within the community. You don't have to be to spend all those hours uh, doing those things. If you want a nine to five job, it's perfectly fine. But if you want to do that, do the things you love and do the things where you get your like energy from. And again, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody um, on this community stage, but also on the other stages. It's like Patrick and Simon already said, it's it's great to see that we got like 2000 uh, people over here who are all sharing the same passion and the same like. Yeah, the same um, uh, interest in, in, in this technology.
So again, I want to say a big thank you to all uh, for attending this session. And I hope to well, one day uh, meet you all in person. Thank you, uh, Neil. Thank you. By the way, if you have any questions or just want to reach out to us, you can drop your questions in the Q&A and Neil and myself will uh, find some time to answer uh, to answer those. In about four minutes, it's time for Gregor. Uh, Gregor will tell us everything about uh, Azure Files. Uh, 